Hello, Namaste everyone. Today we will have a quick introduction of Vedic Mathematics. In Vedic Maths, we teach children the foremost purpose of mathematics is to play with numbers. To play with numbers, we have to become friends with numbers. To become friends with numbers, we have to understand the nature of numbers. So in Vedic Maths, we start teaching children how we make friends with numbers starting from number zero. Origin of Vedic Maths Veda means knowledge in Sanskrit language. It also means scriptures. In these scriptures, there is tremendous amount of knowledge, right from mathematics to weapon making. But most of this knowledge is in encrypted form so that it does not fall into wrong hands. There are about 16 sutras that are related to mathematics in Vedas in encrypted form. Luckily, these sutras are decrypted in 1950s by this great master, Bharati Krishna Tirtha. And his student, Dr. Ken Williams, is my teacher. Here are the 16 sutras in Vedas that are related to mathematics. Just by looking at them, we don't get anything. But these are like keys to great treasures. We will look at some of them. We will see some examples. First, there is a sutra called vertically and crosswise. This sutra can be used to solve all multiplication problems. We will see. For example, this is a two digit multiplication. The answer comes one digit at a time from left to right or right to left using this sutra vertically and crosswise. Okay, we'll go one by one. Step one, vertically multiply the first digits, three and three. Three times three is nine. Step two, crosswise multiply and add. This is also a nine. And finally, we again multiply vertically on the right. One times two, that's two. As simple as that. Buy one more than the one before. Okay, we'll see what it is, where it is used. This is used in multiplications where the former one is same and the later ones add up to a power of 10. Okay, for example, you have a two digit multiplication. The former digit is four, that is same, and the latter ones, three and seven, add up to 10. So we can use this sutra to solve this problem. Former one is four. One more than the former one is five. You just multiply four and five, you get the first part of the answer, that is 20. And step two is simply multiply the latter ones, that is three and seven. Three times seven is 21. As simple as that. Same, you have used, you can use the same formula to solve this one also. Here, the former one is seven. One more than seven is eight. So the first step is seven times eight is 56. And step two, you simply multiply the latter ones. Four times six, 24. You get the answer. All from nine, last from 10. Okay, this formula is used in subtractions like these. 100,000 minus 74,328. What you just need to do is simply subtract all these digits from nine and only the last digit, that is eight from 10, and you get the answer, as simple as that. Here are the three unique qualities of Vedic Maths. Intuitive, reversible, and all-encompassing. We will see. Intuitive. Numbers teach their secrets if we make friends with them. We will see something here. Wow, such a terrifying problem. Not many people will attempt to do this because the answer contains 28 recurring digits. But in Vedic mathematics, we get the answer right away. 
17 divided by 29 is approximated as 17 divided by 30, which can be written as 1.7 divided by 3, and we can start division. So 1.7 divided by 3 is 0 0.5, and we have a reminder 2. We write that 2 in small white letters behind the answer 5, and we make this a 25, and we start when we continue dividing with 3. 25 divided by 3 is 8. Reminder is 1. We write the remainder behind 8. And we make it 18. 18 divided by 3 is 6. Reminder 0. And so on. We can get the answer in no time. All these 28 digits. Not only that. There are three secrets here. Number one. The total digits that are recurring. The 28 is actually coming from this denominator 29 minus 1 and the second secret is as you calculate you can check if you are doing right or wrong when you reach halfway stage that is at the 14th answer here the intermediate result becomes 12 which is nothing but this denominator minus numerator 29 minus 17 is 12 Okay, and the third secret is, if you see these 28 digits of answers, the yellow ones, are arranged in two rows of 14 digits. If you see them, they all add up to 9. That means, the, if you get the first half of the answer, you can get the second half of the answer just by subtracting the, all the digits from 9. Intuitive is how an untrained mind works naturally. Suppose whenever I ask a small child, what is, what is 23 times 22? Give me an approximate answer. Elder children take time. But younger, very small children say 400. And when I ask them, how did you do it? They say 20 times 20 is 400. That means they started the multiplication from the left side rather than right side that is what we are usually taught in schools the untrained mind actually works from left to right in vedic mathematics we teach mental calculations that are from left to right and we also teach from right to left and children are free to explore their own ways and there is one more intuitive thing in vedic mathematics called bar numbers for example, here is a bar number, 19, okay. The big digits like 9, 8, 7, 6, they can be replaced with small digits. For example, 19 is close to 20. It's 20 minus 1. We write it as a 2 bar 1. It is almost like you see there is a clock. The time is right now it is 6.50. But you can, there is another easy way to say the time is 10 to 7. It is These bar numbers are similar to this. We will see an example where we use bar numbers and make our life so easy. Suppose there is a multiplication, 19 times 28. Okay, so we will convert these 19 and 28 into bar numbers. 19 is 20 minus 1. So we write it as a 2 bar 1. Bar 1 is nothing but minus 1. 28 is 30 minus 2. So we write it as 3 bar 2. And there are no carries here. Very easily we can do this multiplication using the vertically and crosswise formula. First is on the left we have 2 times 3 that is 6. Then we have cross multiply and add. We have a bar 7 here. And on the right, we have bar 1 times bar 2, that is a normal 2. Now we have a bar answer, we have to change it to a normal answer. Here we have a 6 bar 7 in the answer, that is nothing but 60 minus 7. So it's a answer is 5, 3, 2. Another example for intuitive is the bigger the number, the easier it is to handle in Vedic mathematics. 
it's like we use the power of the big number to solve the problem. For example, 88 times 98, most people will shiver seeing this problem, but the answer comes straight away because these numbers are close to powers of 10, that is 100. So for example, you see, 88 is 12 away from 100. It is below 100, so we write it a minus 12 beside. 98 is 2 away from 100. It's 2 below 100, so we put a minus 2 here. And that's it, you get the answer right away. The first part of the answer is simply do the crosswise calculation. 88 minus 2. Or you can also do this way, 98 minus 12. The answer is 86. And the second part of the answer is simply multiply minus 12 and minus 2. That is 12 times 2 is 24. The next quality of Vedic Maths is all the calculations that we learn are reversible. If we learned additions, if we reverse the process, we learn subtractions. If we learn multiplications and we revert the process, we get divisions. We just learned the beautiful vertically and crosswise way of multiplication. If we reverse this process, we can solve all the division problems. There is a beautiful way to arrange the division problems as shown here. This is called crowning gem way of divisions. You can simply divide any number with any number. And we can get the answer right away without even using pen and pen. And the same is true with squares and square roots. If you learn how to square the numbers, if you reverse the process, you learn how to do square roots. Squares and square roots are actually part of arithmetic, but we are usually not taught because they're difficult. But squaring and finding square roots is a fantastically beautiful process in Vedic mathematics. All encompassing quality of Vedic mathematics. All the arithmetic calculations we learn can be done in one line. Additions, subtractions, multiplications, divisions, squares and square roots. Now an interesting thing. When we normally do additions, how do you do? Do we start with the calculation from left to right or right to left? We usually start from right and go to left. Similarly, for subtractions, we start from right. Even for multiplications, we are taught to start the calculation from right. But for divisions, we were taught to start the calculation from the left. We never asked why. We always took however we, it is given to us. But in Vedic mathematics, you can learn wherever possible. You, you will learn how to start the calculation from left to right or from right to left or you can create your own ways. And the 16 sutras that we learned, that we saw a while ago, they are applicable to all areas of mathematics, not just arithmetic. They are also applicable to algebra, trigonometry, calculus, and so on. For example, we can use the vertically and crosswise formula of multiplication. We can use it for algebra as well. For example, a plus b times a plus b, you can see, first, vertically, on the left, a times a is a square. And then the cross multiply and add, ab plus ab is 2ab. And then on the right, we have the vertical multiplication, that is b times b, b squared. That's all. There are numerous shortcuts in Vedic mathematics. Please note, Vedic maths is not shortcuts. There is a tremendously beautiful system that forms the base of Vedic mathematics. Out of this system, so many shortcuts sprout up, like the one we are going to see now. Multiplication tables of 11 to 19 is very simple in Vedic mathematics. So, for example, anything from 11 times 11 to 19 times 19 can be done right away. We will see an example. We will do this calculation in two steps. Here we have 12 times 13. Step one is 
12 on the left plus this 3 on the right is 15. Step 2. You simply multiply the second digits here. 2 times 3. That is a 6. The answer is right away. 156. Please note the step 1 is an addition. Step 2 is a multiplication. Okay, this was too simple because there were no carries. Okay, we will see a little more difficult problem now. 13 times 14. The procedure is similar. Step 1. 13 on the left plus the second digit on the right, that is 4. 13 plus 4 is 17. And step 2. You simply multiply the second digits. 3 times 4 is a 12. The one here is a carry and is eaten by 17 and that becomes 18. So the answer is 182. Here we introduce our Vedic Maths YouTube channel. This is the playlist section. You can see there is an elementary level Vedic Mathematics course. It has 20 lessons. This course is suitable for children of grade 2 and above. And we have intermediate level Vedic Mathematics course. This is suitable for children of grade 4 and above. All the workbooks and textbooks are also available as PDF. You can see the video descriptions. And you can also purchase the workbooks and textbooks online. Here we have a section of videos where we introduce the books that we have published. Okay, here we have a playlist of tidbits, a playlist of my conversations with children. In fact, I have even published a book of my conversations with children that is also available in this playlist. Here we have a playlist of introductory talk to Vedic mathematics. We will keep uploading more and more interesting talks to this playlist. And there is a community tab here. This is just like you know your Facebook or Twitter. You can use even the YouTube channel. So please keep checking this community tab for the latest updates from us. Thank you for watching.